Hi, my name is Karen Olege. I am a career strategist and coach. I am devoted to seeing working professionals get the most of their career lives and live satisfying, fulfilling, and even progressive career lives. If this is your desire, then you're in the right place. Welcome to Career Talks with Karen. Subscribe, like, and share so that the rest of your contacts and networks can also benefit from this type of content. Let's get started. So in today's episode, we are talking about how to get headhunted or how to get poached. So for those who are not familiar with this term, headhunting or poaching, as we have put it in our, in our lingo, really means when an organization searches for you, reaches out to you to convince you to take up a certain position or a certain role that they have. So this is the exact opposite of what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. Instead of you looking for jobs on job boards and then applying, interviewing, and finally getting or not getting the job, this is the organization looking and searching for the right person to fill this job and then reaching out to you to convince you. Obviously, this comes with better terms in terms of the, the pay, the benefits that come with it are obviously better so that it can lure you to live where you are to actually go where the, the recruiter or the headhunter is looking for you to go to. So this must feel nice. How do you get headhunted? I will start by just demystifying one misconception that we have about headhunting. Traditionally, we have used headhunting for very senior roles or executive searches, especially uh, for those organizations where the CEO has retired or exited, very senior members of management have retired or exited, and we have used headhunting to recruit for those very senior positions. But headhunting does not only apply for the senior positions. Even junior positions, even junior roles can be headhunted. And I will explain I'll be explaining to you how this happens. So, how is it that junior roles can be headhunted? Or who exactly can get headhunted? So the first group of people that can be headhunted, of course, are the senior executives. And this is because their qualifications are very specialized. You're looking for if you're looking for somebody to head an entire organization, you hardly see job postings about an advert on a CEO from uh, we are looking for a CEO to come and head this organization. Rarely will you see that even board positions, most of the time they're not advertised because these are very specialist roles and you would consider that the kind of talent that you're looking for to lead a whole organization is actually scarce or rare and therefore it creates the need for a recruiter or a headhunter to actually go ahead into the market and look within the industry who is it that I can get to come and to come and do this particular role. The second group of people who can be headhunted is anybody with a specialist skill. So when I'm talking of specialist skill, it could be any skill that is rare in a certain industry. For example, data scientists, actuaries sometimes uh, in, in certain fields can, can look uh, scarce. Uh, perhaps you're looking for a software developer who can develop uh, these types of specialized apps. So anybody who has a specialized skill can be headhunted even at junior level. And I have personally been involved in headhunting for software developers for an organization here in Kenya where I'm actually trying to search through LinkedIn, through the, my networks, through friends and asking them who do you know who can do good software development, who has a good work ethic, who can come in and work for us. So even junior level staff, junior level employees can be headhunted as long as they have a specialist skill. The third group of people who can be headhunted is anyone at any level as long as you, we, an organization is looking for that particular skill in a specific context. For example, I could be looking for somebody in IT who has experience working in um, an insurance company in Somalia. So you realize that, that is, it is very uh, specialized to the extent that you cannot just put out a job advert because you're not going to get specifically that person. So it may need the recruiter to go out in the, in the field or check within their networks or check within LinkedIn to find somebody who matches this kind of contextualized skill and contextualized person. Or for example, you're looking for a, a finance person who has scaled in a startup. So that is quite a very specialized niche which may require a recruiter or a headhunter to go ahead and do the work 
find that person in the market. So no matter which organization is headhunting and why they're headhunting, how would you position yourself for headhunting? How would you position yourself to be the kind of person to be poached? I will be giving you a number of tips. Actually, I have seven tips that I'll be sharing with you on how you can position yourself well for headhunting. The first one is for you to be excellent in your current job. Why do I say that you need to be excellent in your current job? Build a track record of success in your current role. The reason why I'm saying this is because the first person or the first set of people who can actually headhunt you is the very staff that you're working with in your organization. Those colleagues that you work with are the first people that can headhunt you. I have worked in organizations where you find um, somebody leaves the organization to go for greener pastures they get a better job somewhere and when they get there they see vacancies they see vacancies within their team that need to be filled and because they can remember that this person i was working with in this other organization worked so well they are excellent at their work they are very successful person they know how to work with change they, are, they have a good attitude and they really can fit into this role that person can headhunt you they can call you and ask you to come and take up this role and this is such a good person to headhunt you because they probably even know your previous salary where you were working because they were your colleague so in that event they 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 are able to now offer you a more lucrative package that will lure you to leave your previous job and come into that job but if you're not excellent and i have also seen the opposite of these cases where someone is looking for a staff someone is looking for an employee where they're working and i remind them of a colleague that i worked with and the person doesn't want that colleague because they know that person does not deliver results so be excellent in your work create a track record of success remember even when a headhunter is looking is looking for a staff to hire is looking for talent usually we look through our networks and when we are looking through the networks only the people who have a good track record of success and performance are the ones that will actually be candidates for head hunting remember head hunting is about quality you want a quality staff so make sure that you're building that track record of success so that a head hunter can actually get your name when they're trying to look for you in within their networks the second thing is not just to stop at being successful but talk about your success talk about your achievements at work both online and offline uh what do i mean so it is if you work in corporate especially here in kenya you already know it is not just enough to do a good job the extra mile is to talk about the good job that you have done you need to let people know that you are an excellent employee you need to let people know that you're skilled and competent in a certain thing so what that means is talk about your achievements even in the office you could be in finance and you have supported the automation of a certain process that has really for example uh, improved the turnaround times of certain um, processes that you're working with internally take credit talk to other people in the organization about that project that you have done and you have successfully deployed perhaps a system or anything it is that you have done i see people also talking about their successes and achievements on linkedin on your social your professional social platforms talk about your successes when you have completed a training for example take pictures post i see people posting you know it has been a, a, a 12 weeks of you know this intense project that i have been doing in somalia or have been doing in south africa and now i am done we have accomplished this we have done this with our partners our customers our suppliers they talk about their achievements on linkedin so don't just stop at being successful talk about your success that's the only way for us to actually know that you are an employee that has stood out or you're skilled and competent in a particular thing the third tip is to be noticeable be visible if you're looking to be headhunted then you must be found remember the recruit or the headhunter will be searching so you must be in a place where they can find you so what do i mean by uh by by this attend as many networking events as you can go to conferences workshops seminars that have to do that have anything to do with your profession or even those that do not have anything to do with your profession at times if you are a staff in marketing and there is a a, a seminar for finance people feel free to join because there could be a cfo in there who tomorrow they will be looking for somebody in marketing they'll be looking for a specialist in hr so it you will you are one of the names that will pop in their mind when they are looking for when they are looking for such so 
make sure that you're you're visible make sure that you're giving your job cards to people when you meet people give them your job cards and you can actually do job cards on your own you don't have to wait until your employer gives you the job cards because sometimes not all employers will give you uh, the job cards especially if you're at a junior level but you can always create your own job card you can design your own you can use a designer or create your own job cards using canva or using any application that you know just something simple you don't need to put the name of your organization there because that is not their branding but brand yourself you have a personal brand if you're a finance specialist if you're an accountant write there that you're an accountant have a punchy tagline just say something about that accounting or if it is customer experience write i'm a customer experience specialist um and write one punchline which is your belief about customer experience or customer service and include your contacts in there and feel free to share those job cards with people that you meet so that they are able to know you secondly when you go for these conferences and seminars don't just go and be part of the crowd sometimes try to stand out and how do you stand out ask a question when they have a q and a session ask a question or make a comment or clarify a point or just even thank the facilitator for the nuggets that they have shared and the insights that they have shared and even maybe reiterate a point what you're trying to do is to stand out from the crowd if you are around a hundred or even a thousand of you in that conference somebody will remember and of course when you're doing that you stand up you say your name you introduce yourself by your role the organization that you work for and then you proceed and ask the question or make the comment that way you remain in the mind of everybody who was in that conference and the next time perhaps they are looking for or an accountant or somebody who is very good in business development you're probably one of the names that will be popping up in their minds the fourth thing which is kind of related to my previous point is to be proactive in networking i cannot overemphasize the worth of networks we've already had enough times that networks your network is your net worth and i will actually talk about how to transform your networks into your net worth in another episode uh, because that's there's also a process in there between a network and a net worth how do you transform your network to be somebody who can be valuable in your life so what do i mean by proactively networking again belong to your professional bodies every career almost every career or every profession has a professional body locally and even globally you'll find if if you are an accountant i know here locally we have ispark if you are in hr we have the the ihrm if you are in sales if you are in marketing i know that there are professional bodies for everything engineers doctors there is professional bodies for everything so do not don't underestimate the worth or the value of those professional bodies belong join in them in fact from the moment you you land your first job you need to already be belonging to that to that professional body some of them will require an annual subscription fee which is usually less but i can tell you the value that you earn from belonging to that professional body is much more than the amount of money that you have given so i would like to encourage you be very proactive in networking interact with customers and suppliers within your organization don't just confine yourself to your your fellow staff and your colleagues you also some of you are in roles where you're you're interfacing with suppliers you're interfacing with partners you're interfacing with customers these people they they are in jobs wherever they are they are also in jobs they are also employed and from time to time they are looking for uh, to work with certain uh, people certain qualified staff and you are likely to pop up in their mind if you stand out and if you engage with them beyond just the service that they are giving to you or the service that you're giving them i have seen in an organization where i have worked before where we have actually employed one of our partners somebody who we worked with and this lady she used to go the extra mile and you could tell that she was committed she was devoted in her job and when we had an opportunity that aligned with the kind of person that she is she's one of the minds that popped up and of course we head hunted so um don't just confine yourself to your colleagues make sure that you're also talking more with your customers and with your suppliers and with your partners and with everybody else who's a stakeholder to your business the fifth thing is talk about the kind of opportunities you would be open to talk about your career prospects with people let your family your friends everybody in your networks let them know what your career prospects are and i i don't know i don't know how we got there but somehow in kenya or in africa there is a tendency to not want to talk about our next step you don't want to talk about your ambitions you don't want to tell people about the things that you're looking forward to have the kind of growth that you're expecting in your workplace because people believe 
you know other people will do something to sabotage you but i actually don't believe in this i think it is something that needs to be demystified and i think people need to talk about their prospects how else am i going to know that you're looking for a certain growth opportunity if you don't share it it's all in your mind so get into the habit of sharing your prospects and you're not sharing with people to tell them you need to give me a job or i want a job in your organization no all you're telling them is i'm looking to uh you know solve problems perhaps in the insurance industry i'm looking to perhaps uh use data that the large data that insurance organizations are getting just to try and get some insights into consumer behavior of you know the insurance uh, products things like that i am looking to perhaps work in a multinational or an insurance organization that is big beyond kenya so those are your career prospects you are just telling someone what your ambitions are and let your networks know so that when that opportunity or such an opportunity arises then a headhunter can have your name in there in their mind they can remember that i met this person and this person actually wanted or was looking for such and such an opportunity the sixth tip cross skill and differentiate yourself cross skill multi-skill and what do i mean by that don't just uh confine yourself into into one box for example if you're in hr don't just confine yourself in hr alone i will give you an example of myself i am in hr but i am also a project management specialist i have done certifications in project management globally i have really immersed myself into understanding the body of knowledge of projects so it makes it easy sometimes you find um that somebody is looking for a hr project manager so they're looking for somebody who is a, a specialist in HR, but is also a specialist in projects. And you find that rarely will you get somebody who, who has such a cross skill. Sometimes you're looking for a HR accountant. So you need somebody who has both knowledge areas or a marketing accountant. So you need somebody who has both the knowledge areas. And it really uh, sets you apart if you have tried to multi-skill or cross skill so just uh it's like majoring in one thing and minoring in another so find out what is that thing that you have majored in it could be customer experience then look for an extra skill it could even be it minor in that it so that if an it intensive organization is looking for somebody in customer experience then you have naturally cut that niche for yourself and you are a candidate for headhunting the last tip is always say yes to a conversation and know more about the role so when a headhunter reaches out to you or a recruiter reaches out to you with a with a role that they would like for you to take don't be quick quick to dismiss the role especially sometimes when you hear the organization you ask which is that organization i personally i personally uh, don't like to work with certain organizations i will not mention names but especially here in kenya there are two two specific uh there is an industry that i don't like to work work in for personal reasons and there's also a few organizations that i do, i cannot even imagine taking a job in them because of the kind of reputation that i have come to know of them and twice before uh, people have reached out to me asking me for a role in those organizations and I knew that I cannot work in this organization so I had to turn it down but how do you turn down first of all the first step is to say yes and listen ask more questions about that particular role get to know what that headhunter is talking about get to hear more details who am i reporting to what's my span of control am i supervising anybody if yes how many and at what level what are the reporting lines like what's the salary what are the benefits get to know as much about that position as possible ask for the job description uh, most headhunters will headhunt you on LinkedIn. So ask them for the job description. You can schedule a 30-minute call with them just to get to understand more about the role. Once you have understood and you feel like you still need to decline that role, decline it, but go ahead and tell the headhunter the kind of prospects that you're looking for. Perhaps the opportunity they came with this time does not align with your career prospects. But make sure that you have told them that this, this one I cannot take, but I am looking for this and this and these kinds of opportunities so should they because these headhunters they headhunt for many organizations in different industries and at different times at different levels so next time they will know that this is not the the job that had was a good fit for you at this time but the next time when they have such an opportunity a different opportunity that now matches your prospects this headhunter will now reach out to you and ask you whether you're interested in that job now i mentioned a point on networking i'm done with my seven tips but i mentioned a point on networking and uh, i had talked about you networking within your organization also networking online but also there is you networking with your competitor organizations it's a very key thing that sometimes we forget about now you are different from your organization 
company A, if for example we have company A and company B which are in the same industry, for example company A and B are both banks. These two banks are, in, are definitely competitors of each other because they are serving the same clientele with just about the same type of product. But you, are, you as an individual, if you're working in bank A, you are not a competitor of bank B. You can actually collaborate because if you're already working in bank A, that makes you a very good candidate for headhunting in the next bank because that means if you're standing out as a staff in bank A, you can easily cross over to bank B. So do not, and I don't mean go to bank B and start sharing the trade secrets of your current company because that's illegal and it's actually unethical. But what I mean is when you're networking, network with people from your competition. Let them know your career story. Let them know your successes. Let them know your skills and competencies because this is one one area or one, one group of people that can very easily headhunt you. Ladies and gentlemen, that brings me to the end of today's episode. I hope that that information has been or will be useful to you. If it has been, please subscribe to this channel, like and share this video so that other people around you can also benefit from that same content also click on the notification bell so that you do not miss out on any of our future episodes see you on the next one